Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now today's video is something a little bit different and certainly more aimed at the beginner classic car enthusiast. Uh, I've had a message or two from my subscribers saying they're new to the world of MG Midgets, they have dyslexia or they have trouble reading the manuals that it comes with, like the Haynes manual or the, the Moss catalog. They would just love a simple guide to identifying each part in this engine bay. So why don't we just do that now? <laughs> no idea why my voice went high then. Welcome to the MG Midget 1275 engine bay. Now before we get started, let me sneak in. Can you see me? Wonderful. Uh, I recommend you get your mitts on some of these bits of literature. If you can, they'll be useful when you're working on the car. Uh, original owner's handbook. This contains so much useful, cool stuff. Um, spark plug gap settings, the types of lubricants to use, tyre pressures, everything like that in a really concise form. This is a bit tattered, but I use it every time I work on the car. I know, invaluable. I know they're hard to read sometimes, but the original Haynes manual, it's just a good partner to have in the garage. Um, again, contains the same information as in there, um, written a bit differently and obviously a lot more detailed on how to do the jobs on the car you need to do. Tappets, whatever, clutch, engine removal, all that jazz. And if you want a slightly more visual representation, because you're like me and words can be a bit much sometimes, get yourself one of these. It's free. Moss catalogue. I hope you guys have them in the States. It just has exploded diagrams of every part of the car, from every screw that goes in from the upholstery, you name it, it's in here. So useful when you're putting things back together again or you're looking to buy parts that might be missing. So those three are the holy trinity for me. Let's go on with looking at this engine. Yeah. Ooh. Tell you what, I chose the wrong day to do this. Zero here in Bristol, UK. Right, I'm gonna to talk to you on this camera, but also use this one Ooh. to show you all the stuff a bit more close up. It's gonna be a very brief overview, okay? If you want more detailed stuff, you'll have to consult the manuals or someone a lot brainier than me. But in terms of a simple overview of the 1275 engine, let's do it. So we're gonna work, I guess, as we see it, clockwise. Left to right, starting here. This python here that goes into that black box, that is the air intake into the heater matrix box. So essentially cold air comes in, into this thing, which is fed with warm water through these hoses via this adjustable tap from the block. And then when you turn your fan on inside the car, that's where you get your heat from. Just to the left of that, you'll see this black box and these two cans here. Essentially, this is your brake and clutch master cylinder reservoirs. This is where the fluid sits that feeds the pressure system for your brakes and for your clutch. And this box houses the sort of pedal linkage mechanisms that push that around. Further up, this little thing here, that is your indicator switch. So if your indicators aren't working properly or they're flashing on incorrectly, that's probably died. This is a new one that I've put in. Okay, so next to the indicator little switch thing is this. This is quite important. I know nothing about electronics or wiring, but in here are the fuses. If I just take it off, you'll see. There are your fuses. Two spare ones standing up to attention there. Arousing. Behind that is a box I've never had to touch. This thing is a voltage regulator. Mm-hmm. So coming down, back to the front of the car again, as we've done the left-hand side, let's go a little bit further in. This hunk of metal is the radiator, but you knew that. Uh, there it is in all its glory with all its fins. This yellow thing, prizes, it's the fan, driven by the fan belt and the engine. And that is connected to this, which is the dynamo, or, you know, some cars might have an alternator. This is what helps charge your battery. So then behind the dynamo is this other Coke can of dreams. This thing here is a coil, and the coil is what feeds your distributor, which then is what feeds your spark plugs, which go into the block and cause your big bang. This next thing has always thrown me. It looks like a UFO. Can you see it? This thing. I still don't know how it works, but apparently it's to do with the retard 
all connected to your carburetor setup and your throttle. Down here, you'll see this flying lead. This was in one of my recent videos. This is the, my remote clutch bleed nipple, which uh, I will be properly installing now that I know that it works. And you can just see down there behind all of that retard and all that sort of stuff, that's the gearbox housing that's bolted onto the engine. You can just see the little bit of blue paint down there. And then behind the heater box, you should all know this box, it's the battery! Woohoo! We're getting there, people, we're getting there. Okay, let's come round. Just looking at the very front of the car, that is where the spring for your bonnet gets put. So you can just see it there. That compresses down and holds your bonnet in place. And your little pull lead inside the cabin pulls apart that sort of cigar cutter thing in the middle. And that is the bit where the latch happens. So when you open the bonnet, you push that rather vicious looking latch and it allows you to open the bonnet. So now we're coming to the middle of the engine. Past the radiator, you see this whopping other snake or a python. This is your coolant hose that flows through the radiator and into the engine. And this is the thermostat housing. There's a little diaphragm in here that opens and closes when uh, it gets hot or cold and allows coolant to flow. It goes into the block itself and gets circulated around. Uh, then of course we find our spark plugs and this thing which is called the valve or rocker cover. This thing literally is where you can lift off and adjust your tappets and check that the oil looks good in there, no broken parts, that kind of thing. Oh, and this bit on top of the rocker cover, the valve cover, is your oil filler cap. This thing at the back here, this is what I mentioned to you earlier, this is the heater adjustment valve or tap. If you fully close it, you get no heat into the cabin. If you fully open it, you get all the heat into the cabin. So at the moment, being winter, it's open all the time. Let's go a bit further over. Can I even fit in? I don't know. Oh God, I'm touching things. So th this first pipe here, you see, this is connected to all the coolant system and helps feed into your heater matrix. Now we're moving to the mid-right. So uh, starting along here, you can start to see these massive pipes here. These are your exhaust manifolds. Essentially, you'll have four of those, one for each cylinder that carries all your exhaust gases down and out through the back of the car. And it starts here with the exhaust manifold. Now we should talk about this next chunk of stuff as a whole, really. What you're looking at here is the air fuel throttle body assembly, really. These are your air filters, and these two bits of housing are air filters. These are your actual carburetor assemblies with your dash pots. Float chambers, you should have one per carburetor. These are your fuel lines coming in. Okay, and this is the throttle body itself. And this right here is your accelerator pedal cable that pulls on this cable and drags more air and more fuel into the combustion chambers of the car. Okay, starting from the front right, you've got this little thing. This is the coolant expansion tank. So in there, it should be half full at all times and you can take that off and fill it up, making sure it's half full. That's where the extra coolant goes. Moving along, see the top of the shock absorber down there? That's part of the, obviously, the suspension assembly. And that's about it. We go past all of that. We come up to here. You can just see tucked in that corner there, that sort of weird bell looking thing. Can you see that? That sort of bell looking thing under there is actually the wiper motor. And in relation to that, you can see up here, you've got your windscreen wiper fluid and you've got, believe it or not, that little thing there with the red wire attached to it is windscreen wiper pump. That's what literally helps pressurize and push water out of the nozzles. Yeah. So there you have it. A brief overview of the MG Midget 1275 engine when looking from above. Hopefully some of you guys who were struggling have found that a bit useful, but I am not the font of knowledge when it comes to these cars. So if there's anything I've missed or if there's anything you want to add to in the comments below, please do. This channel is all about helping each other out. We're learning as we go, people. We're learning as we go. Hopefully I'll see you for the next video, which is gonna be an MG Midget servicing video. Should be fun. Can't wait. Take care till then.